super kicker, big air, Spencer Wilton, crowd, oh and he's done it again, oh these last few turns are going to be crucial. This is e-Explorer World Cup, the pioneering all-electric all-terrain motorbike series. After an unfortunate shoulder injury in practice, we've managed to rope in the legendary freestyle rider and Mad Will team owner Robbie Madison to give us a lowdown on this event. Hi guys, welcome to the FIM e-Explorer World Cup round three. We're in France, Auvergne region. They call this area the lungs of France. Surrounded by dense bushlands, we're perched up on a hill, we have inactive volcanoes in our background. We have an amazing course, male and female competitors, nine teams going for the World Championship. The stakes are high, everyone wants to win, let's find out who's going to be victorious for this round. Welcome to the track. Each team comprises of a male and female rider. Both teams are required to complete a run on each lane of the course, with logs, jumps and rocks following a relay format. The team who achieves the fastest overall time advances to the next round with the losers being eliminated. Spencer Wilton of Team 7 guides us through the rock garden and lane one. All right, so we got a little section here, a rock turn, some big rocks on the top and then a bunch of loose rolly ones right here. And you can see them too, they're kind of like coming out and you don't want to hit them with your front tire because if you land and hit one with your front tire, you could push the front out. So I think it's going to be like, keep the weight on the rear tire coming down and maybe try to like keep the light front and wheelie down sort of. I think the inside, so the inside's a bit more uh, like a rock platform and the outside is rock set sections. So grass and then a rock and then grass and then a rock and you're turning a bit wider. So this is a tight inside and a super wide outside, but the downside on the outside is a little bit sketchier. So I think the inside's going to be faster, but the outside's safer. Gate one drop off the start line, down the hill, wide open into the straightaway, on the brakes, into three logs, and then wide open into the rock turn, a super tight left turn, into a downhill loose rock section, wide open into a huge freestyle kicker, wide open down the landing, into a big wall ride, right hand turn, sweeper turn, into a double, and then wide open with a jump onto a shipping container, and then jump off the shipping container, into a big right handed sweeper turn, wide open into another ski jump and then on the brakes into six chicane turns slippery super dusty and then wide open into the finish line after the time trial team seven were fastest followed by gravity in second place while championship leaders mie landed in fifth the qualifying heats then determine the eight teams advancing to the quarterfinals the husband and wife duo of Team Flair failing to make it through with Rihanna Buchanan having a nasty crash and twisting her knee. We all wish her a speedy recovery. The first race in the quarterfinal saw Fanatics, Rosie Rowett and Dylan Woodcock go up against Liz Cat, whose rider Neve Holmes hails from an enduro background, while Alex Andres comes from motocross. How will both handle the obstacles and jumps? Uh, for me, being a motocross guy, it's quite challenging because they have like a lot of enduro cross obstacles and even freestyle ramps. I never hit a freestyle ramp before, so it's all new, but we'll get used to it. And I mean, that's part of the challenge. I mean, it's basically all good. I was just trying to test out the track and they have a big obstacle where you can basically jump over a container. And I tried to do that and messed it up a bit, came quite a bit long and now the bike shut off. But it's something they will fix and we'll be back for qualifying. All good. So yeah, coming from an enduro background, um, we've obviously got rocks and logs here. So it's, that's very similar to our uh, pro logs that we do at um, the Enduro World Championship. But um, there's not so many jumps normally. Um, there's quite a few big jumps here today. So yeah, they're, uh, they're pretty scary. I don't think it uh, does it justice until you're right up close to them, how big they actually are. Um, so yeah, for me, um, the first few practice sessions, I was kind of just riding um, like up to the jumps and not really jumping them, um, just to kind of get a feel for the bike and you know pacing them really. And then um, the more runs I did, the, the more I started jumping and getting more comfortable with it. But yes, um, the jumps are definitely different. But yeah, no, it's, it's going well. So Rosie Rowett of the Fanatics up against Alex Andres for the Lizcat team. Oh, hard into this log pile. Very different lanes. Remember the riders switch lanes, the team switch lanes, so it all evens up. 
and through the rocks then. Rosie Rowett and Dres though in the white. Oh, and hard on the power down this straight. And jumps back into the lead. Big air over that massive double there, really. These riders getting more and more to grips with these electric bikes. Andres again sending the big double. Rowett perhaps a little cautious off the uh, men metal super kicker there. But look at the lead for Lizcat. Miles out front at the moment. Coming into these switchbacks now. Quite difficult actually with the amount of power these electric bikes can put out. A delicate right hand there though, finding traction. And it's Lizcat then that lead. And out goes for the Lizcat team, Neve Holmes now. A woman who comes from an enduro background, so she'll like these bits of the track, the rocks and the tree roots and the logs, but the jumps will not be so to her liking. And there's one coming up now. Onto the step up, cleanly across there as well. Neve Holmes though, is gonna come under pressure, you feel, from Dylan Woodcock here. Woodcock absolutely railing that wall ride. Neve, well, not really bringing the pace along this bottom straight. And Dylan Woodcock now for the Fanatics team. Tearing away with this electrifying performance. Oh, he's absolutely lit up here. Stood up through these turns as well. Look at that for skills. Couple of little dabs there. But Woodcock is going to bring it home. Last couple of turns for him now. So Dylan Woodcock and Fanatics win the first race of three. Fanatics went on to win the second race by 14 seconds, securing them the first spot in the semi-finals. Seven versus Mad Will up next. Let's see who's replacing Robbie Madison and what the formidable Sandra Keller thinks. Yeah, first round in Spain, the teammate was Robbie, and the second round in Switzerland, Robbie that didn't come. And now in the third round here in France, Robbie is injured. Yeah, so I have a new teammate for this one. Okay, so they called me yesterday. I was with my child in the forest with the bicycle. It was 11 in the morning, so they asked me if I can uh, ride for Robbie because Robbie crashed and uh, he was not able to ride. So I come back home and look with my family. It was okay, so. I came here, I drove six hours to be here and uh, yeah, I test the bike yesterday evening. It was the first time for me that I ride the e motorbike and uh, yeah, the feeling was good and uh, yeah, I'm really happy to be here. Quarter final number two then, Spencer Wilton up against Mad Wills at Sandra Keller, Wilton riding for seven. And look at this, a big advantage at the moment then into this rock section though. Of course, it's the long way round. Then the mud gets carried on and Wilton loses the front. Look at that. So, a massive opportunity now for Sandra Keller. Ha! Oh, not scared to send that massive booter there. And there's Wilton. So, Wilton over the bars there, loses the front. So, the seven team really in trouble. And Madwill winning that race one by 30 seconds then. So Madwill, race two of this second quarter final. Spencer Wilton lining up again against Sandra Keller for the Madwill team then. The same duo going again. And remember, Spencer Wilton, oh, and he's done it again. So Wilton has gone down again just actually before he did. Oh, and look at that. Keller tiptoeing through there. Taking the lead for Madwill. Big over that booter as well. And now we know Spencer Wilton has got the pace. But he doesn't seem to be able to deal with these rock sections on this course. This much more open track here. Of course, the uh, race series still evolving. The manufacturers still evolving. A lot of hop up parts, a lot of boost parts coming in for this one. Upgrades all round chains becoming less of an issue for these riders now these electric bikes just putting out so much power but actually the drive chain has been struggling through there nicely for Sandra Keller then and now Madwill goes out with their second rider Jonathan Ross 
Good advantage, and look at this. Looking good over there then, Jonathan Ross. For seven, it will be Vild Marie Holt. Trying to chase him down. But Ross safely through the rock section. It's caught so many problems for seven, Spencer Wilton. And here is Vild Marie Holt. Whoa, that big super kicker. Can't imagine how that feels on an electric bike. There's so much power in your right hand. You need to be incredibly careful. You could easily over jump those, those jumps off those ramps. But going back round to our leader now, Jonathan Ross for Madwill. Bill Marie Holt jumping up onto the step up there. But Madwill, he's flying here out front. It's going to be a win for Robbie Madison's team. Yes. Mad Will, even with a third rider change, is still looking competitive and book their place in the semi-final. There are multiple different types of bikes in this championship and PCR Sam Winterburn and Chloe Richardson talk us through their Suron. So this is the Suron Ultra B um, and this is what I've been riding this weekend. Um, it's obviously a completely electric bike, so um, it's rev and go. We don't have a clutch. Um, so it's literally driven by a motor and um, twist the throttle and, and you go. So obviously with, with this bike, the brakes are up on the handlebars. We have no rear foot pedal down here. So um, we have the front brake on the right and the rear brake on the left. Um, because we're doing quite technical kind of riding, um, we need some good suspension. So we've got obviously the front forks here for the front suspension and uh, the rear shock absorber here. Um, which is brilliant for kind of technical riding like over rocks and logs. Yeah, also um, obviously there's a, there's a battery which where an engine should be in a normal bike. Um, it's belt driven on the left hand side down here, which then goes through a shaft, which is called a jack shaft towards the, the front sprocket, which obviously is chain driven on this side to a, um, to a rear, to obviously the rear wheel. Um, we can change the, the size of the sprockets on the rear to either make it slower or faster. The battery life on this is about, I'd say about an hour and a half, the way we ride them quite fast. Um, to charge the battery takes about two hours. Uh, we've got a, a setting mode on the handlebars up here where we can change the mode of the bike. Obviously we've got number one, which is obviously a slow mode, um, number two, which is middle. And then if you really want to go and like give it some on, change it to number three. Um, the torque on the thing though is unbelievable. Um, it's just, it, it's so fast off the go. Um, and then as so, soon as you get going, it's just, it's unbelievable. Um, Another good thing about it is the uh, the weight of the bike. I think it's 90. I think it's 92 or 97 kilogram, which is which is ideal over the over the rock sections and the logs just to just to keep bunny up in it over. And um, yeah, it's just yeah an awesome bike really. PCR Sam and Chloe now face current championship leaders MIE in quarter final three. Sandra Gomez can't be here as she's doing Romaniacs. Does her replacement, Jesse Gardner, feel the pressure filling Sandra's shoes? Yeah, for sure. We only found out I was coming here three weeks ago, I got asked. Um, and I was actually at another race that I couldn't start because I was heavily with the flu. Um, so I was like, oh, I hope I get better. And to be honest, I, yeah, I didn't realise that they were winning. And so as the conversation went on, probably last week, they told me, oh, and you know, you're riding for the team that's currently leading and they've won the first two rounds. I was like, oh, no pressure, right? No pressure. The leading, you know, the first time in history of uh, electric championship, you know, it's, it's an amazing feeling. And yeah, uh, yes, I hope to keep the, the lead for the rest of the championship and I hope we can win the championship. Quarter final three then. Chloe Richardson up against Jessica Gardner. PCR up against MIE in this one. On board with Chloe Richardson. Should make light work of these rocks. Recently competing in the Scottish Six Day Trial. Yeah, she's out of there cleanly. Jessica Gardner not looking as comfortable actually through the rock, but making up for it over the big sender there. 
Richardson. Well, oh my goodness me. Well, Gardner risking it all. A big case on there. Almost big enough for a lawyer, a case like that. Got away with it there. Got away with it though. And now it's Chloe Richardson playing chase. Trying to catch up here. Last few turners. Well, Gardner first across the line for MIE. Jorge Zaragoza comes out now. Riding that EMX powertrain bike. And look, looking good through there, Zaragoza. We know how fast he is on the open parts of the course. As we're about to see big scrub on there. Nice to watch, but look at this. Sam Winterburn. Well, the motocross rider from the UK. Fighting back here, and there's not much in this one. Going to be super close, this one. Winterburn hard on the power up the step up there. Oh, these last few turns are going to be crucial. Pressure telling these riders to risk everything. If you do, though, you may lose a rut, lose time. Riding with absolute precision, these two. And it is going to be the MIE team that win by just a second there. After a close first run, PCR San Winterburn had a near miss in race two, allowing MIE to continue their unbeaten streak. The last quarter final, French team versus French team here in France. This is a biggie. Electric motion versus gravity. EM's Christophe Bruin talks us through their electric motion bike and we meet Gravity's new pairing of Camille Chapelier and Chiara Fontanese. Um, this place is like really nice for here in France and yeah, I'm really happy to be uh, racing in my country. Uh, the track is really nice, so it's like completely different than in Switzerland. And yeah, there is some nice jump, uh, some technical parties, so yeah, it's like really nice. Um, well, I'm here for the my very first time of the FIM uh, Electric Championship. Uh, completely different uh, format and racetrack. Not used to the stones and woods, but I'm getting to learn it. I have a good teammate and uh, I like to be in this team who feels like to be in a family. So I'm really happy about that. It's, uh, it's like a trial bike with special parts. So it's really the beginning and uh, they did a big, big, big work uh, this, this winter to, to, to make the bikes faster like that, because normally trial it's not fast. So they, they work a lot with engineers and everything. So now we can fight with this bike. Maybe we don't have the, the faster bike, but maybe it's a complete bike with a clutch, with a good suspension, not really heavy, not really small. So it's like um, a good combination, I think, with this bike. We will fight till the end of the championship because uh, now we are second. This weekend, I, we hope to keep this, uh, this, uh, this position. Quarter final number four, then three races, remember. First of two wins. Marine Lemoyne for electric motion, the EM team. Chiara Fontanese for gravity. Closest to us now, a little bit of problem over that log there. And out front, it's Marine Lemoyne on that incredibly sorted electric motion bike. The French team, really, I would say, at the forefront of electric bike technology at the moment. One of the most sorted packages out there. Chiara Fontanese then. Well, gravity not holding her back as she flies over that big double jump. And looking really good here then. Fontanese in these last turns already. And look at the gap. Well, Marine Lemoyne absolutely been blown out of the water on this first round. Chapelier picks up the handle then for gravity. Out he goes now. And a decent advantage for this team. It's going to be Christophe Bruan though chasing him. The all-rounder. And there he is, Bruan comes through. Well, I knew we'd see him. I must admit, I didn't think we'd see him that quick. But look at the pace of the Frenchman. Oh, loses time on that big outside turn there. 
Chapelier knows he's got these logs coming though and has to get on the brakes hard. Lemoyne around, excuse me, Bruand around the outside. Whoa, a dynamic rider. Really loving riding these electric bikes. You can see it for yourselves there. And it's neck and neck nearly in these last couple of turns. Wow, look at that, electric motion. Win the first. Race number two, Marine Lemoyne up against Kiera Fontanesi, remember? Lemoyne picking her way through this difficult rock section. Caught a few riders out already. Kiera Fontanesi up the inside. Fighting to get on that power, and she does. Squashes it hard off the big metal kicker there. Wow. Into these double jumps they come. Fontanesi doubles into the first two. Nothing on the outside though from Lemoyne, so Fontanesi definitely picking up more speed around the outside. Lemoyne around the inside now again on the power. But it's Fontanesi leading this one at the moment for the gravity team. So. Gravity, leading them out again on this second race. Chapelier, around the outside. Well, slippery rocks there. You can see big marks on them where the bottom of the engines, the bottom of the electric motors have been catching. And he's free of that rock section now, Chapelier. Free to get on it. Oh, Bruan getting dynamic off that big kicker. And carrying so much pace around here. Wow. Up onto the container he comes. And he landed just before the end of it, actually. So Chapelier for gravity around the inside. It's coming up tight, this one, at the end of this one. Wow, look at this. Oh, Bruan, getting a bit messy there. And it's got to be gravity. EM go one, gravity as well. So it all comes down to race three. Fontanesi for gravity. Marine Lemoyne for electric motion. Wow. All on this then, all on nothing. First two heats have been very close. Just fractions between these two teams. This is the one that counts though. And it's Lemoyne safely through the rock garden. Oh, but look at that. Fontanesi with big pace up over the metal kicker. And again, sends that double out of that turn, Fontanesi. So gaining more time. Oh, Lemoyne. Really has to anchor up for those logs, which means Fontanesi can just get hard on the horsepower, on the watts, whatever you want to call it. And these riding these grooves, these ruts perfectly in these turns now. Just feathering on that electric power as best she can. So. Fontanesi hands over to Camille Chapelier now. But remember, it's going to be Christophe Bruan who's going to be chasing him down. And we know how fast he can be. Chapelier. Whoa. Well, the motocross rider. Probably dealing with a piece of the track he likes least. <clears throat> Where is Bruan? A bit further back this time, but only just. Here he is. Oh, Bruan sending it big again off that metal, metal kicker. Carrying so much pace. Squashes the big double there as we follow him with our racing drone. Up on top of the container. Cool, look. Bruan all over that bike like a rash. Forcing it left and right. Trying to close down on Chapelier. Remember, this is a place in the semis here. Bruan messy around the last turn. Oh, and this one is definitely going to go the way of gravity. So gravity go through to the semi-finals. Electric Motion are out of the competition. Oh, and they will be gutted with that. After the quarterfinals, Madwill, Fanatics, Gravity and MIE all go through to the semi-finals. Interestingly, each of those teams have a new rider lineup. Madwill and Fanatics up next in the first semi-final. We sat down with Rosie Rowett and Dylan Woodcock to see how they find racing as a team and how the course suits them. 
It's definitely different. I've been an individual since I started riding motocross. So I've never had a teammate that you have to rely on in a race. I'm not a log jumper or an enduro rider, and Rosie is, so she's a bit better than me on the rocks and the logs, and I'm a bit faster on the straight corners and the jump. So it's happy medium. You've got to find two riders that are good at both and can merge together. It's like he's pushing me a lot more now on the track to what I can do, like confidence-wise. Like before, I probably wouldn't have hit half the stuff that I have. Um, on an e-bike because it's my first like proper time to actually ride the bike so yeah my confidence has grown massively today obviously there's quite a few different types of e-bikes here this one's like one of the smaller e-bikes uh, whereas in the rock gardens it's a lot easier to move about whereas with the obviously the bigger bikes it's generally quite hard to get it around the corners unless you're really strong but so yeah I'm really enjoying that bike Our first semi-final then, race one of three. Fanatics, Rosie Rowett up against Mad Will, Sandra Keller. And Rosie Rowett there in the blue. Whoa, carrying good pace into this rock section. Making mincemeat of it actually, flying through there. Not the tidiest, but definitely not the slowest. Oh, Keller, a bit messy on the way out though. Perfect throttle control up the face of that super kick of that metal ramp. And doubling back then, Keller. Which means she's going to carry more pace along this straight and take the lead. As Rosie Rowett slows down for those logs. Remember, the team switched lanes for their second run in each heat, of course. So, Madwell team leading. Look at this, Keller looking good. Making some big improvements on that bike coming into this competition. And also the course. You know, the, the course designers really listening to the manufacturers. We're getting more and more of what we want. And Keller, well, a little messy around those last turns. Let's row it. And Fanatics back into this one. So it's Woodcock now for the Fanatics team. Jonathan Ross out front at the moment for Madwell. There he is. Whoa. And good through there, actually. Back on the power. Oh, squashing hard on the step up. Woodcock cleanly over that big jump as well. But you can see what he's got to do in front of him. Jonathan Ross eight still with the advantage. Oh, but this is going to get tight at the end of the lap, I think. It's looking like it. So Ross eight for Madwill. Desperately trying to stay with Woodcock. He's got the inside on this turn, evens things up again. Last couple of turns then. This is going to be a super close finish between these two. Oh, neck and neck out of the last turn. Here we go to sprint to the line. And Mad will take it. It's the closest ever finish we've had in the Explorer. Three tenths of a second in it. Each term suffered a technical failure in the following races, which means Mad will go through to the final. Up next for that remaining spot in the final, it's Gravity versus MIE. Each team have won a race, so it all comes down to this final run. Well, semi-final two, the third race. It's neck and neck between MIE and Gravity. One win apiece. So it comes down to this one. Zaragoza for MIE. Fontanese for the team Gravity. Zaragoza closest to us. On that EMX powertrain bike, the bike where they actually use a standard motocross bike and take out the uh, combustible engine and put an electric one in its place. So the chassis fully sorted on that rig, that's for sure. But Fontanese giving chase here, goes deep onto the container. Look at this then. So Fontanese for gravity. Oh, Zaragoza trying to put the power down perhaps too much as well. Losing a bit of drive, the back end kicking out. Last few turns, remember a place in the final on this. Zaragoza leads him across the line. And now it's Jessica Gardner for MIE going out. And it's going to be Camille Chapelier. She's going to be up against, riding for gravity. And it's gravity and it's Chapelier that really have the work to do. And it's Chapelier that is looking, well, I was going to say, to leave that rock section first. He doesn't. Whoa! Deep over there for Jessica Gardner and now Chapelier comes to the front and it's going to take everything that gravity that Chapelier have got to stay in front as he hits the log section. 
Jessica Gardner now making a move around the outside for MAE, MAE. And again, this one's coming back together as we hit these last few turns. Whoever crosses the line first, books their team a place in those finals. Oh, and Chapelier, beautiful through those last turns. Gardner perhaps get a little stalled up. Chapelier does it. Gravity of the first team to beat MIE and advance through to the final. Battle for the last spot on the podium. MIE versus Fanatics in the small final. Okay then, small final. MIE versus the Fanatics for third and fourth. And take some valuable points to the overall championship, of course. Rosie Ruit out front for, Na for, for, for the Fanatics team. Jessica Gardner on the MIE. Remember the MIE team winning the first two rounds of this series. So the first time they've lost this year. But now MIE back in charge here. Jessica Gardner sending it big over that huge metal booter there. Lovely across that double as well. Rosie Ruit cautiously off that big super kicker. No hitting them too far. We saw what happened in practice when they did that. And look at this then. So, Gardner making it work on the MIE machine. Hard on the brakes into these turns. Takes the inside rut. Shorter line. It's going to work for her. Rosie Ruit though, not too far back actually. And these two are going to hand over to the men. There's not going to be much in it. So, Zaragoza first out. And it's going to be Dylan Woodcock giving chase. Zaragoza. Been at this difficult rock section. You can see the rain earlier in the week. Just made the ground a little damp. That mud. Whoa. Just as they say how slippery it is. That mud getting dragged onto the rocks. There's Dylan Woodcock then. Fighting back already. And now the advantage should be his along this straight. Up onto the container and he draws level. Oh, so look at this, Woodcock managing to put Zara Goza under some real pressure, neck and neck as they step it up into these last few turns then. <clears throat> Zara Goza around the outside, carrying good speed, a man who looks like he won't be rushed. He knows how easily mistakes there, keeps his composure, keeps the lead and takes the win in round one for the MIE team. Small final race two then. MIE with the advantage. Jessica Gardner, the first out. Rosie Rowett next to her though. Remember though, if MIE win this, they've won the small final. They've took third place here. But it's Rowett out front at the moment. But she's got to tackle this rock section. Good speed through there. Oh, and here is Jessica Gardner. And Jessica Gardner then bringing the MIE team back into this. Rowett on the inside around that right-hander. And now Gardner needs to get on the power down this straight, and she does. And those logs on the right of the container, they're going to slow up, row it even more. So look at this. Jessica Gardner for MIE, their first defeat this year. Still going to make it good by winning this small final to take third overall, it's looking like. Wow. So, MIE, really under any pressure here at all. Rosie Ruit. Some way back. Oh, and a mistake in that last turn. Oh, I don't believe it. Wow. So it all changed in those last couple of turns. Oh, and the MIE team go out front. As Dylan Woodcock clearly has some issues. The Fanatics team looking like they have got some... He's got no power. Some mechanical problems. Then it's a lap of honour for Jorge Zaragoza and MIE. Zaragoza takes the small final win for his team. And unfortunately, the Fanatics bow out with a short circuit. MIE secure third place, making it three podiums in a row for the Japanese team. It's finals time. Who will end up on the top step? Robbie Madison's Mad Will or Gravity at their home race? Well, the first two rounds of this series have been won by MIE. They're not a finalist today, so a massive opportunity for Madwill and for Gravity. Jonathan Ross out front then. For Madwill, we go on board with him now. 
And at this rock section, it's dried out a bit as the day's gone on. More traction there now, no problems then. Ross, fast through there. Chiara Fontanesi giving, oh! And going big. I was saying giving chase, almost jumping into the lead there. Sending it massive off that ramp. And Chiara now on that lower line and carrying the speed across the container. Jumping into the berm there and full power up this hill here. Plenty of amplitude, no pun intended there. Oh, and it's neck and neck really as they come into these last turns. Mad will and gravity, these two teams battling out. And Mad Will's Jonathan Ross sprints to the line and Mad Will lead as the second rider now leads the hut. Oh, into the log matrix then for Sandra Keller. Camille Chapillier for gravity around the outside. Feed up into this rock section. Clean through there. Going slow perhaps to go fast, making no mistakes. And laying down the watts as soon as he's out of there. Oh, Keller goes big. Really big off that metal kicker there. But she has got work to do. Remember this, only the first race of three. Best of three that takes the win. Oh, on board then with Keller. Going to hit this step up now and things are going to be pretty tight again through these last bends. Chapelier, really under pressure now. Oh, can Keller do anything to close him down? Chapelier sprints for the line and it's gravity that takes the first race in this final. So gravity with the advantage as we go into race two. If they win this, they've won round three of this E-Explorer FIM World Championship. We follow Jonathan Ross for Madwill then. Oh, he needs a big advantage really as he crosses the line and hands over to the second rider. Clean through those rocks. Ah, oh, and look at the style from Chiara Fontanesi there. Absolutely giving it everything around that turn on the power really, really early. Oh, and right finding his way back into this one then. So Fontanesi taking the lead. Wow. Coming into these last few turns now. Oh, it's nothing in it at all between these two. Neck and neck it's going to be as they go out onto the second he onto the second pairing of riders. And it's Madwell across the line first. That allows Sandra Keller to leave the gate just ahead of Camille Chapelier. And Chapelier, remember, on Gravity Team, if he can win this, they've won their first final of 2023. Keller up the inside though. Chapelier making a big mistake on the outside. Whoa. Keller really getting a grips. Ah! Oh, Keller's head. Keller's head goes back and a chain's dropped and it's over for Madwell. Well, so many upgrades coming into this event. We thought we'd seen the last of that, but the chain is off for Sandra Keller and Camille Chapelier is literally got to get that bike across the line to see Gravity win their first FIME Explorer World Championship final. They've done it. Oh, and sad times for the Madwell team. It's not how we want to see a final end, but we've got a new team winner. From not even qualifying at the first round in Spain to now winning at their home event. Now to our budding pit reporter who's caught up with our winners. Over to you, Maddo. Okay, Camille, Chiara, congratulations. Winners of the third round of the FIM Explorer here in France. I mean, six times world champion, badass beach racer, champion yourself. How do you guys feel like the outcome, obviously, is a fierce battle. There's ups and downs. I mean, give me a little bit of, uh, from your aspect as being the winners. Well, I'm really happy. I mean, it, it's something completely new to me. I never did the stones and trees, and it made it so difficult in the morning because it was slippery and I was crashing. So I didn't expect, honestly, that I could be that fast to help Camille to win together the race. But finally, we came from last to first, so it's incredible. I have no words for that. Great job. I mean, you're outstanding out there. Camille, what was your take? I mean, just ups and downs. Uh, you managed to 
put up with the pressure and came victorious. How was it for you? Yeah, I mean, this weekend was a real real coaster, you know, like yesterday we did P2 during the qualification. This morning we were last and then today, tonight, I mean, we are, we are first. So, yeah, I'm really happy. Like, OK, Kara uh, did a really good job in the trees and uh, in the storm um, when the sun came back. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's the first time for her and not for me. So she did a really good job. She she kept strong in the, in the mind, you know. So yeah, like say the music we started from the bottom, but now we are here. <laughs> Starting from the bottom, now we're here. Some incredible riding from these guys. Overcame all the conditions. Your champions, ladies and gentlemen, Kara and Camille. Well done. Thank you, my friend. Thanks so much. At round one in Spain, we saw the Madville team having real issues to keep their chain on. They sorted it for round two, but here in France at round three, we're seeing it happening again. The reason is that they've had a power upgrade from 30 kilowatts to 42 kilowatts, and that increase in power is again stretching that chain. As soon as it's loose, it falls off, and we know the team are working hard on a solution for the next round. All right, guys, this is an outstanding event. I think one of the favorite parts is Rob Warner wasn't here, but I did an amazing job, you know, filling in for him. Not that I did too much. I know he's going to crush it in the studio. Thanks, Rob, for, for doing your part. And, mate, we missed you. Honestly, we missed you. It was a sole point you weren't here. But from one Rob to another, over to you, pal. Great work, Mad Dog. Gravity take the win, securing them 25 points in the championship. Overall, MIE remain at the top of the table with 66 points with Mad Will and Gravity a joint second with 46. Our next event is in Sardinia, Italy, which will be a double header on the 16th and 17th of September. For more behind the scenes action, check out our socials. Thanks for joining us. I've been your commentator, Rob Warner. We'll see you next time. Yeah.